This bunkhouse was constructed using my sawmill for less than $200, wood stove included. Well, we're starting the day off with uh, trying to replace the ignition solenoid for the tractor. Uh, most of you will know that this tractor has been out of commission for about two months now, uh, and that's because the starter has needed to be rebuilt. So that's done, uh, but unfortunately the key still doesn't work, which is why we're replacing the ignition solenoid. Um, so once it's done, we will see if the tractor is fully functional. It should be, but um, we'll see in a couple minutes here. Yeah, the oh, okay. blue one here is the negative, and then the black one you're handing me is the positive. Oh, okay. okay. Here, I should go this way. Kind of move the way that the purpose is turning. Okay. You know it's working, and the battery seems to be okay, then we should snug those right down. Yeah. Well, I need to charge the battery soon anyway, actually. Oh, okay. Right. Take it back. Okay, the starter's back in, and the solenoid is hooked up, so we're going to give it a try. Let's hope it works. Okay, we've just switched the poles on the solenoid, so this is attempt number two. Seems like we're back in business. With the tractor repaired, I could finally move some supplies to the build site, including a wood stove for the bunkhouse. I will also be able to bring some heavy logs to the sawmill again, which I will be processing into flooring for the log cabin my dad and I have been building. During the construction of the log cabin, my dad and I realized that we needed to build a shed to safely protect our tools from the elements. Up until that point, we had been storing everything under tarps, but we found that moisture was still finding its way onto our tools. This obviously wasn't a good thing, especially with winter quickly closing in on us. It was then that my dad and I decided to divide our efforts. He would spend the majority of the autumn months building a tool shed with the lumber we produced from our portable sawmill, while I would continue working on the log cabin. Considering the relative remoteness of the build site, the shed needed to be more than a mere tool shed. We needed something that would not only shelter our tools, but ourselves as well. A place we could wait out the rain in, warm up during the winter time, and sleep in during the night. We needed a bunkhouse. Considering we can make our own lumber, we knew it would be possible to construct the bunkhouse at low cost. If you're interested in seeing more detailed videos on the construction of the runners, joists, and framing, I'll leave a link to those in the description below.
So far, we've spent only $40 on screws, $25 on vapor barrier, $15 on a used window, and $80 on a used wood stove complete with piping, which means that to date, our heated bunkhouse has only cost us $160 to construct. As for the second window, a friend gave it to me after renovating his own shed. The door I found for free on the side of the road. Now I know what some of you might be thinking, why on earth would we install a screen door in a heated bunkhouse? Wouldn't we want something thicker to hold the heat in, especially during the winter months? The truth is, the screen door is perfect for this type of application. It lets loads of natural light into the bunkhouse, and it's also great for ventilation. Believe me, considering the small size of the shed, that wood stove will heat us out of there in no time if we didn't have the ability to balance the temperature with some cool air intake. Finally, I have a hard time arguing with Free. We still have some more work to do on the bunkhouse, including setting the wood stove up and putting some proper roofing on. I also plan to install some salvaged eaves troughs so that I can set up a much needed rainwater collection system for the build site. Aside from those smaller details, the bunkhouse is officially up and running.
Yeah, you hear him? As my dad and I ate our meal in the shelter we had built with our own two hands, we felt a sense of satisfaction. The meal was simple and the setting was humble, but we dined like kings in our own minds. On our first official night there, the temperature dropped down to a brisk one degree above freezing. There was no mistaking that we could have been warmer, but we slept through the night under a good set of blankets in relative comfort. Thanks for joining us today. If you're interested in what I do, make sure to subscribe and click or tap the bell to stay up to date on the latest episodes. Until next time, my friends.